Hi everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how I made this frame for that carriage plate for them pallet forks and the first thing you're going to see in the video is notching out here and notching out here and then we'll do some more measuring, some more cutting and we'll start assembling the frame probably going to be a two part video because uh, there's quite a bit of work involved in that so yes, thanks for watching, let us know what you think in the comments and we're just having a cheeky measure up for the assister rams for the three point linkage too could be interesting stay tuned got my pieces of metal now to do the forklift frame to make the carriage plate fit to the <clears throat> three point hitch on the tractor so what I've done is I have set it up in the milling machine as you can see got a roughing out bit which I'm um, set the automatic stop on the auto traverse <clears throat> so it'll always stop in the same position and now I can do one and a half mil cuts so this is nice and easy I can do seven passes at one and a half mil that'll take me through to my 10 mil thickness for the wall so that there is 9.8 so one and a half mil seven cuts should take me about 10 minutes <clears throat> and then we'll be good to start welding this all together. There's a you know tacking it up and then making sure it fits up. So let's get cracking. So the first thing we need to do is go to this end because we're going to be cutting in that direction. And we can make a start. Had these plates cut now for the forklift frame. Um, I don't know how well you can see that, but 
it's really uniformly stacked um, <coughs> God knows how the plasma cutters on that but this side here it's just basically hacked to death um, uniformly stacked on there same this end <coughs> God knows what I've done here so it's not the people I normally use who do the profile cutting for me because they've been getting a new machine installed so their machine's not running at the moment so I thought I'd give this other company a try and I am not impressed um, <clears throat> they cut this bit here 3mm under size so that's going back and another bit they decided to cut with a guillotine and it's got three and a half mil warp in it so that's going back as well um, so what I've done tack welded these together <clears throat> can drop them in the vice on the milling machine I'm going to mill this off it's going to make it two mil on the size which isn't ideal but I, d I need stuff to be getting on with I need something to work with just take them two bits back lesson learned I have now a machine that is <clears throat> good as I can to get it usable and it's 1.2 mil under minimum size now which we can still work with but to get an achievable workable finish we have had to take on this end 4 mil off it because that's how much curve Falcliffe's plasma cutter puts on whether that's a CNC or whether that is human error I don't know but they had the engineer drawings and they were tolerance within two mil so they had one two five to one two seven and they've come in at massively over on the top and massively under on the bottom with the undercut so I won't be using phone clips for plasma cutting anymore. Definitely not. Got the <clears throat> first notch out now for the channel iron. So what I intend to do is turn this over, leave the depth the same and do the other side. And then this should <clears throat> fit into the channel. Hopefully. It will. It will. Oh, um, yeah, leave in the comments. Um, leave a comment to say whether you would have accepted the quality of the finish of this or not. Um, like I say, <clears throat> I'm not happy with it. I won't be using them again. But I am in a position where I do need to get this job done, which is why I'm using it and not returning it at the moment. And there we go, we've got these pieces in now. Um, as you can see, it's pretty in good there, but there's a bit of a roundness gap there. Um, like I say, that's because the metal is now 1.2 mil, I think it is, under the minimum size that I wanted. And we've still got some marks there, but we're going to leave these on the back out of the way. Um, good thing is, though, we do have this nice machined edge now still that we can measure in for our holes and now it's notched out there that gives us a little bit of wriggle room just to get this all lined up so we're going to go with getting the front all in line and then whatever's on the back hopefully isn't really going to be seen too much so yeah let's get the holes marked that's the next job
charge for the material, they charge for cutting, etc. They charge to basically supply me with material at the sizes I requested. And they said they could do the job. And it was specified and every part had a flatness of one millimetre on it. And for some reason they decided to use the guillotine to cut one of the pieces. And obviously, as a lot of us know with guillotines, they warp steel quite considerably. So that had a three and a half mil warp in something that was about eight inches long. So bouncing about that. And the 15 mil plate, they had a tolerance zone of 127 to 125 mil in width. And they've come in three mil under that because they haven't allowed for the amount of undercut that their machine produces. So clearly there's no quality control here and people don't have any pride in their work. So let's see how quickly they can sort the problem out. Stay tuned. Right then guys, we are back on the way. And girls, and girls, don't forget the girls. Yep, we are just leaving the steel yard now. They have cut me some new bits of plate, no questions asked. And yeah, I think the lad was having a bit of a, um, it's been a long week moment to be honest. Um, <laughs> concentrate. So we are on the way again and we can go and get on with some machining. So yeah, it's not really about how you mess up, it's about how you put it right and Fair play to Thorncliffs, they have put it right, no questions asked. And <laughs> the guy in the office he goes, Oh, yeah, we're not quite used to your tolerances of like plus or minus a mil. We're more used to working plus or minus five to ten mil. <laughs> I was like, What? Plus or minus five to ten mil. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, not quite suitable for what I want. And the thing that was disappointing was the um, plasma cutter that they use, they don't have it on a track or anything. Now, remember years ago you could get the tracks for the oxycetylene for cutting? I would have thought that they would have had one of them for oxycetylene or oxypropane and they could have put their plasma cutter on it too so that they could do their straight cuts but apparently their plasma cutter they use freehand which is why there was basically three and a half mil of undercut on it um, yeah so anyway we have new plate now so um, I've cut it slightly oversized this time to make sure that we can machine it back to the right size that we want to start from again and then we can get on with all the machining that we're going to be doing so big thumbs up to them for sorting that for me it has put me uh, probably put me about three hours behind where I want it to be now but you know we are sorting so it's not the end of the world well yeah I've been there waiting for them to do that now for an hour so hours that I lost yesterday because of it uh, and an hour today. When the man said they normally worked within five to ten mil, he wasn't joking was he? Bear in mind that is the good side and this is the low side so we'll start machining and see how big the step is. Ironically they got that so far out, but the edges are bloody good. So they can get the length right, just not the width. How? Answers in the comments below. Or am I being too hard on them? Let me know. These are meant to be a pair, plus or minus one mil. Theoretically, only two mil difference between the two pieces. And that step there is nine and a half to ten mil. So far, this bad cutting has set me back about five hours with all the machine in the pack to do to get it back to something usable. Hmm. 
What a shame my friend had a new laser installed and it wasn't working at the time because it would have been so much better, so much quicker and he'd have put all the holes in for me too. Let's hope he doesn't change this one soon so that we can keep using him and getting a lot more profile cutting. Got these edges cleaned up now so we've got data A and data B, whatever you want to call it. Um, so what I've done is I've measured my original hole positions and for some reason I went 83 mil. Um, I'm guessing that's because it was off the forklift mast that I was going to use and I've just kind of moved this across and copied it. But what I've decided to do is put on 50 mil in from the edge and 75 from that edge. So I've taken them back way 8 mil um, just to have a little bit more meat on here. I'm basing all my dimensions at the moment off of my a frame that i've got which is going to be a good indication of what thicknesses the materials required um save so me doing all the stress calculations etc etc so basically this is my setup i've got a couple of these underneath to keep it flat and off of the bed so i don't damage the bed put a center pot mark on the crosshairs and then I've got a centre in the drill chuck and then I have put some pressure onto this with the centre to hold it in the correct place and then tighten down my clamps. So now that's done we can take that out, send it up, we're going to swap that now for the collet chuck and then we are going to use the annular cutter for the mag drill and that's what we're going to use to cut a hole. Put the annular cutter in now in the collet chuck and lock the bed off uh, there underneath as well so the X and Y axis is locked off and we're ready to cut. So we're on the slowest speed we can which is 75 rpm. Whoop. And I flicked the wrong switch so let's go. So for the people that are wondering why I use an annular cutter rather than a twist drill, there's a couple of reasons. Um, this fits the mag drill first, which is why I initially bought it for, and fits in the collet. It's shorter, which can be either good or bad. And the main reason is it takes a lot less power to drive it. Um, some of the drawbacks, it's not really ideally, ideally suited to a collet truck because it's got the flats on it, so there's not a massive amount of area to grip on compared to what they should be you have to keep knocking these plugs out so you, if you like stack material like this you can drill through the first one then it breaks free you gotta take the cutter out knock the plug out the middle then you can cut the second one you don't have that problem with a twist drill so it's quicker in that respect um swarf breaks a bit easier i think with these and a twist drill but you know you can and down the twist drill so you can still break it at your leisure and probably these work out a little bit cheaper than the twist drill even though they don't last as long but for a twist drill you do need a big grinder or something to sharpen it because that's a 26 mil cutter so 26 mil twist drill would be quite long so i'll be limited on the throat space on the um, height on the z-axis where i'm not with this and yeah i don't have a bench grinder at the moment big enough to grind one so if anyone's got a better way of doing it let us know in the comments below marked on my radiuses so we're going to mill the worst material off there we're going to do this side first and then we're going to do the other side <clears throat> then we'll clean them up with a grinder or whatever um, and we flip this over and then we mill the other face and the reason I'm going to do this side first is because there's a weld down here and same on this end so that's holding it together for me at the moment so it makes sense to do this side first. Got all my edges milled back down now. Um, when you try and use flat bar instead of plate to make bits you end up losing quite a bit of the radius because this one had to be machined and 
it had a flat edge on that side and that side and then this one had the radius edge on this side and a flat edge on this side and it looked the right mesh so I've had to now machine that pretty much back then I can just put a bit of a edge on to <clears throat> take the sharpness off so we'll break the edge on that hopefully where I've cut these little steps in with a milling machine I can now use a flat wheel on the grinder and I can use these as like a guide to keep going down parallel and we'll get them rounded off um, yeah then we should be ready to get ready for welding we need to shorten that plate because they couldn't even cut back the right length again um, so I reckon I'm probably seven hours behind now with it because of that and there we go so what we've done we've followed the little slot lines that we made and blended them out same with that one and we've got a lovely little radius on them so we'll prep the mill scale off now um so we we'll split these and that'll all right and then um, get rid of the mill scale do the same on the other bits finish prepping the mill scale off of that and then we'll be ready hopefully for jigging up and welding let's hope it goes to plan